The V2 Virgil Tungswafa II, with the technical name Aggregate 4, was the world's first long-range guided ballistic missile. The missile, powered by a liquid propellant rocket engine, was developed during the Second World War in Germany as a vengeance weapon, and assigned to attack Allied cities as retaliation for the Allied bombings against German cities. The world's first large-scale experimental rocket program was Opel Rack under the leadership of Fritz von Opel and Max Vallier, a collaborator of Oberth, during the late 1920s leading to the first manned rocket cars and rocket planes, which paved the way for the Nazi-era V-2 program and U.S. and Soviet activities from 1950 onwards. Following successes at Kummersdorf with the first two aggregate series rockets, Braun and Walter Riedel began thinking of a much larger rocket in the summer of 1936, based on a projected 25,000 kg thrust engine. In 1943, the Austrian resistance group around Heinrich Mayer managed to send exact drawings of the V-2 rocket to the American Office of Strategic Services. At launch the A-4 propelled itself for up to 65 seconds on its own power, and a program motor held the inclination at the specified angle until engine shutdown, after which the rocket continued on a ballistic free-fall trajectory. The rocket reached a height of 80 kilometers or 264,000 feet after shutting off the engine. Dr. Thiel's development of the 25-ton rocket motor relied on pump feeding, rather than on the earlier pressure feeding. Some later V-2s used guide beams, radio signals transmitted from the ground, to keep the missile on course, but the first models used a simple analog computer that adjusted the azimuth for the rocket, and the flying distance was controlled by the timing of the engine cut off, brentulous, ground controlled by a Doppler system or by different types of onboard integrating accelerometers. 12 to 232 The Operation Penguin V-2 Offensive began on 8 September 1944, when Lehr und Versuch's battery No. 444-51-2 launched a single rocket guided by a radio beam directed at Paris. The painting of the operational V-2s was mostly a ragged-edged pattern with several variations, but at the end of the war a plain olive-green rocket also appeared. During tests the rocket was painted in a characteristic black and white chessboard pattern, which aided in determining if the rocket was spinning around its longitudinal axis. The original German designation of the rocket was V-2, unhyphenated, exactly as used for any Third Reich era, second prototype, example of an RLM registered German aircraft design, but US publications such as Life magazine were using the hyphenated form, V-2, as early as December 1944. 281 testing confirmed that the so-called tin trousers, a tube designed to strengthen the forward end of the rocket cladding, reduced the likelihood of air bursts. 139 to 152 the Germans eventually moved production to the underground middlework in the Kohnstein where 5,200 V-2 rockets were built with the use of forced labor. On the 8th of September a single rocket was launched at Paris, which caused modest damage near Port d'Italie. The Germans themselves finally announced the V-2 on the 8th of November 1944 and only then, on the 10th of November 1944, did Winston Churchill inform Parliament, and the world, that England had been under rocket attack, for the last few weeks. The largest loss of life by a single rocket attack during the war came on 16 December 1944, when the roof of the crowded Cine Rex was struck, leaving 567 dead and 291 injured. An estimated 2,754 civilians were killed in London by V-2 attacks with another 6,523 injured, which is two people killed per V-2 rocket. Possibly, from the potential sighting of the American fighter by the missile's launch crew, the rocket was quickly lowered from a near-launch ready 85 degrees elevation to 30 degrees. The first estimates suggested that 320,000 shells would have to be fired for each rocket. The project codename was Pruffstand 12, sometimes called the Rocket U-Boat. According to decrypted messages from the Japanese embassy in Germany, 12 dismantled V-2 rockets were shipped to Japan. At the end of the war, a race began between the United States and the USSR to retrieve as many V-2 rockets and staff as possible. After the Nazi defeat, German engineers were moved to the United States, the United Kingdom and the USSR, where they further developed the V-2 rocket for military and civilian purposes. The V-2 rocket also laid the foundation for the liquid fuel missiles and space launchers used later. Operation Paperclip recruited German engineers and Special Mission V-2 transported the captured V-2 parts to the United States. In addition to V-2 hardware, the US government delivered German mechanization equations for the V-2 guidance, navigation, and control systems, as well as for advanced development concept vehicles, to US defense contractors for analysis. 
The U.S. Navy attempted to launch a German V-2 rocket at C-1 test launch from the aircraft carrier USS Midway was performed on 6 September 1947 as part of the Navy's Operation Sandy. The PGM-11 Redstone rocket is a direct descendant of the V-2. Details of Soviet achievements were unknown to the German team and completely underestimated by Western intelligence until, in November 1957, the Sputnik 1 satellite was successfully launched to orbit by the Sputnik rocket based on R-7, the world's first intercontinental ballistic missile. In the autumn of 1945, the group led by M. T. Konrovov K. and N. G. Chernyshov at Ni-4 Rocket Artillery Institute of the USSR Academy of Sciences developed on their own initiative the first stratospheric rocket project. VR-190 called for vertical flight of two pilots to an altitude of 200 km using captured German V-2 rockets. The rocket has the most complete set of guidance components of all surviving A4S. V-2 display including engine, parts, rocket body and many documents and photographs relating to the development and use at Le Coupe Museum, Wiserns, Pas de Calais. One complete rocket in the World War II wing of the Musée de l'Armée in Paris. The complete turbo pump is at Solway Aviation Museum, Carlisle Airport as part of the Blue Streak Rocket Exhibition. One rocket body at Picatinny Arsenal in Dover, New Jersey.